Welcome to the BuildFire Workshop, where we learn how to build new features on the BuildFire platform. Today, we're going to learn about the user data database and how we can use it within our plugins. Let's dive right in. So uh, just to recap on what we did last time, we used the data store to preset a list of tasks that all users need to complete and populated it on the widget side of the plugin. Remember the control side, widget side. So it's pre-populated for all users. We use the buildfire auth namespace to make sure that the user is logged in. And today with user data, what we want to do is save user-centric data for this task list. While this is a fixed task list using our CMS, the data store, we want to keep track of each user's individual status of whether task one was completed or not, task two was completed or not, and so on. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to uh, save this data in a user-centric database called user data. And we'll jump into the code and take a look at uh, what we did before. So this is the same code that we had set up um, previously. If you haven't seen how we got here, make sure you watch the previous tutorials on uh, data store and build fire auth. And uh, so uh, setting up the styling for this page, pretty straightforward. We have uh, an H3 um, header for uh, the tasks and then a uh, unsorted list called UL tasks for the tasks and then our code. Again, not necessarily uh, a tutorial for the best practice of how to um, lay out your code. Uh, this is really made for uh, simplicity. And so, uh, again, just recapping the way the layout is, is we have a bunch of simple functions. Load gets triggered immediately in the beginning. Let's take a look at that. It calls build fire data store. Uh, the name of our collection or table is called task list co uh, collection. Once it comes back, it renders the tasks for everything that comes back in the response data. So it's going to loop through that task. Now, again, as a recap, we saved our entire task list in an array in a single object and not multiple objects, just because generally tasks aren't going into the uh, hundreds or the thousands uh, list. So it should be manageable to keep in just a separate array. Um, if there's an update on the data store, go ahead and re-render those tasks. Make sure that um, the user is currently logged in and stays logged in. So let's take a look at render tasks. So render tasks is going to take the list of tasks and then just loop through them and then add the task to the task list. So if I come here to add task list, in here we're uh, creating on the fly. Remember our, our function here, UI. This is just a quick helper uh, function to create a UI elements on the fly um, so that we don't have to deal with any particular framework. And so it creates one, it adds it to the current UL list and then manages uh, the on click event. On the click event, uh, we are going to uh, do some work that we haven't done last time. And basically all this does is it makes sure if you click on it, it adds uh, the class completed, which basically turns it green. And if it's already completed and you click it again, it removes it. So it says if it has completed, remove completed, update our profile, going back to where our profile came from, all the way on top. This is the singleton uh, object. My profile has a single property called completed tasks. That's an array. So it basically finds a task uh, with, the, with that name making the assumption that no two tasks have the same name. Uh, and if it finds it, it splices the array so that it removes it and then saves the task list. As you can see, if I add, it's saving. If I remove, it saves instantly. So that's basically what's happening here. If I don't have the completed uh, class list, then it will add that in and then push to the array a, the, the task name that I selected and then saves it again. Let's take a look at saving. Now this is where we're going into the user data side of things. So on the user data side of things, 
uh, you'll see all uh, it, it acts very similar to data store uh, in which it's just build fire dot user data instead of data store and dot save again whenever we're dealing with a single object that has multiple properties has everything that we need you're dealing more with a get and a save if you're dealing with multiple objects you're dealing with more insert update and search so because this is a simple example it has one object that has everything that we need called my profile it's going to save my profile into my completed tasks and that's the collection where we're saving this specific user's uh, uh, tasks this will fail if the user is not logged in because the user is logged in it will know to save this for Daniel Hindi's uh, profile and not somebody else's not John Doe's not Jane Doe's it's specific to the logged in user if there's an error just go ahead and log that to the uh, console uh, otherwise just move on and that's that's it just like we did with the data store um, however the biggest difference here is on the widget side we're able to save data where the data store is read only on the widget side now remember data stores is uh, more of a static database it's a CMS it gets compiled and shipped over to the app um, so that it's it's available offline and it's uh, read uh, read only so you can't read and write to it it never you're never allowed to change the CMS again the data store where user data and public data and app data uh, things that we'll cover in future episodes you're able to read and write from freely on um, the uh, widget side now the last portion that we didn't go over is when we load the user tasks and so if we take a look at the load function after it renders the initial lists of tasks the static list that everybody gets uh, and make sure it handles on updates so that any updates that occur are re-rendered it gets the current logged in user and then loads that user's tasks so uh, once I have that particular user I can come in here and uh, while we don't necessarily need to use this user property we need to ensure that that user actually exists <clears throat> because buildfire.userdata.get will automatically know who the logged in user is and as long as we're calling the same uh, collection name in this case it's my completed tasks it'll get back a response if if there is a response and it has data and it has completed tasks let's go ahead and take the data object now remember the response uh, when, when we save an object in build fire databases generally speaking it takes your data and, and your data object and it wraps it uh, in uh, a wrapper that has a, a database id uh, created on and last updated on um, this is done for um, a specific reason within build fire so um, so all the magic works so the only caveat is is when when you get a response back it's not going to come back as your entire object your object is going to be inside of the data property of the response so anyway we grab the data put it into my profile loop through the completed tasks in the completed tasks we're basically searching for all the um, uh, list elements inside of the unordered list and for each one of those if the inner HTML equals the task that we have again looping through the actual tasks we add completed to it again not necessarily the best example of efficiency in code but it's a simple clear example where we're just looping through the list and comparing it do we have this task completed yes or no going back here again it loads immediately and then checks uh, if I have anything previously saved so as I reload here you'll see the initial list rendered without the completed uh, check the this particular user who is logged in and then made sure if it's um, if it's completed then it makes it green otherwise it just skips it and so on so this is an easy example of how we can save user-centric data in the build fire embass uh, it's a database that's very easy to use it's very extensive We'll drop in the description below the link to the API documentation so you could read um, more about it. Um, other than that, uh, in the next episodes, we'll go through additional features um, such as uh, public data uh, and app data, push notifications, and so on. So stay tuned for the next episode. I hope this was useful. 
If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest content. If you do so, you'll also be entered into a raffle where you can win some Build Fire merchandise. Thanks for watching.